Hello and welcome to another video. In this one we're going to be talking about a command that I run a lot on stream, which is git fetch dash dash prune. There's also git pull dash dash prune, but you know, they're, they're essentially the same thing. Um, but I figured I'd explain what git fetch is doing and what dash dash prune is doing. And, uh, you know, it turns out that I don't actually need this command line, so I'll show you some, some settings that you can do to git at the end of the video. So let's jump into that. Okay, so first, First, we're going to do a little bit of ASCII art. Because <laughs> uh, in order to explain this, I kind of want to talk about how Git manages branches and how they're transferred between remotes and your local checkout and actually checked out branches. Um, and we'll, and I'll, I'll kind of like draw it over here and then I'll actually clone some repositories and show you how that would work. So, um, you know, we kind of have two portions here. Uh, we have our remote Git repo. Uh, up here, and we have our local file system down here. And in our local file system, we actually kind of have two spaces. We have the like git metadata. So in here we have, you know, git metadata. And here we also have the checked out branches. Checked out branches. And on our remote repo, it stores all of the branches that exist there. So you might have like a branch called you know, ref slash head slash master or ref slash heads slash PR1 or something like that. So let's say there are, you know, two branches up there. And if we were to, um, I oh, can't do that that way. If we were to run a git fetch, that will pull those branches down to our local version. So, you know, a, uh, a fetch here. Ignore the red. The red's actually kind of annoying. I thought it would. I thought this would render better, but I guess it doesn't. Uh, I can just. Well, actually, we'll we'll fill in the other ha half of this as well. So, if fetch will pull down the branches to our local file system. A push will put the branches up to um, up to the remote repository. So, we'll have a push here. Get the trailing white space. Um, so if I were to perform a fetch on this remote repository, let's actually create a couple more addresses here. Uh, feature one, feature, feature, that's how you spell, feature one, uh, and feature two. So say we, say we had a couple of branches up here. And by pulling a fetch, uh, our local file system will retrieve some Git metadata. So instead of having, you know, these be ref says slash head, these will be origin slash Master, I guess, do a replace there. Ref slash heads with origin slash master. Okay, so our local Git metadata after a fetch now contains uh, these branches, but a sort of local shadow copy of them. And when we do git checkout, which is how we get to here, checkout, um, this will make particular branches available in our like checkout space. Even though these technically exist inside the Git metadata, they don't necessarily show up in Git branches, for instance. So let's say we did Git checkout feature one, and we were already on master because master usually happens automatically for clone. And then you'll see, you know, master, and you'll see feature feature one because you've you've explicitly checked out this branch. So that's kind of how Git keeps track of branches on a local versus a remote version. And so let's talk about what prune does. Uh, what prune does is sometimes, so by, by default, all of these will happen whenever fetch happens. So you'll you'll only gain branches here. So let's say that somebody came along and you know deleted the PR1 branch. If you just perform a git fetch, your local copy will still maintain this PR1 reference, even though the branch has been deleted. Uh, but if you fetch with dash dash prune, you will uh, you know delete this. And uh, that's not the default behavior because you could lose data by fetching from a repository like that. That's basically what prune does, and I use it because it can sometimes save some disk space. I was uh, I learned this habit when I was working at Yelp, and there were, you know, hundreds of developers working on one repository and you know millions of lines of code, and sometimes people would push and pull branches that were, you know, a bit chunky, and uh, I would rather not have those, you know, making my disk bigger on disk. Making, making my repository bigger on disk. Okay, so now you've explained the theoretical part of this, let's actually show an example of this. So I'm gonna clone a repository that I work on called PyUpgrade. 
Uh, we're actually going to clone this twice. So once to just the normal pi upgrade directory and once to pi upgrade two. And we're going to um, we're going to CD into pi upgrade over here, but we're going to CD into pi upgrade two over here. This is just so that we have two clones of this, so I can demo like deleting a branch and creating a branch. Uh, so if I were to run uh, get checkout origin master dash b feature one, um, and just to show you the state of things right now, if I do get branch dash r, these are the branches that exist on origin. Uh, if I do get branch, these are the branches that exist locally. So you can see that I, I checked out feature ones so that made a branch locally. And if I push feature one, get push origin head, uh, you'll see that once this pushes, because it takes a while because it's GitHub, you'll see now that get branch dash R includes feature one. And if we were to, you know, open this up on GitHub, uh, let's see, github.com, isatili slash pi upgrade. You can see, where is the branches list? <laughs> They've made this really annoying. Okay, there it is. Um, you can see that we have, you know, master feature one and new class super v2, which matches these here. This is origin slash head is a special reference that points to the default branch. You can kind of ignore this. Um, but if we go over to our pi upgrade two clone over here, none of those got updated because uh, Git is a distributed version control system. So if we do git branch dash r here, you'll see that it doesn't know anything about feature one. Um, and if we do git branch here, you'll see that we're just on master. But if we were to fetch, we were to run git fetch, uh, this will now fetch this origin slash feature one. So you can see now if we do git branch dash r, it now knows about feature one, which is kind of this, you know, fetch operation here. So you can see that these two now match and they match the remote repository. Uh, and we can push to delete this branch. So if we do git push origin feature colon feature one, each, why do I keep doing that? Feature one. This will delete that remote branch. And you'll see now if we do git branch dash r, there's no longer feature one and uh, we, we don't have it locally. But if you look over at this repository, Again, because it's a distributed version control, you don't get changes until you push or, or you don't get changes until you pull from the remote repository. You'll see that feature one still exists here. And in fact, if I do git fetch, uh, it didn't delete this this feature one branch because I didn't tell it to prune. But if I were to do git fetch dash dash prune, it will delete that branch, which is uh, which is why I you know use git fetch dash dash prune. You can see that that branch is now gone. Now, a thing that I learned you know, right before this video, because I did a tiny bit of prep where I was like, you know, there's probably an option for this in Git to automatically use dash dash prune. I probably should unlearn typing dash dash prune on the command line. And in fact, there is. You can do git config dash dash global fetch dot prune to true. And that will make it so it always prunes um, whether whether or not you specify dash dash prune on the command line. You can also configure it on particular remotes instead of just doing it globally, but Honestly, I, I can't think of a time where this has ever burned me, so I think it's pretty safe to set it to true. Um, but anyway, that's git fetch with dash dash prune. Hopefully this little diagram is you know somewhat helpful, and hopefully you understand why I use it. Uh, if you guys have additional stuff you want to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.